Welcome. Today we are going to standardize, so find out the exact or more accurate concentration of this hydrochloric acid. So this hydrochloric acid on its label says that it is 0.1 molar. We can do much better than that. We can find it to at least three sig figs. So why don't we try? The way we're going to find the concentration of this acid is to see how we titrate it against a known base. So we're going to pick a base to make a standard solution of. And the standard solution we're going to make is of sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate is a very good choice because this is anhydrous. We've kept it in a desiccator and incubator overnight, so we've got rid of all the water. We're very sure of its molar mass. And we are just going to zero that watch glass on here. And I should be able to get three decimal places. Now I'm going to accurately, but approximately 1.3 grams of this. So think about what approximately accurately means. So just pour a little bit on, a little bit more, a tiny bit more, to be honest. Oh, that'll do me. So remember, I'm aiming for around about 1.3 grams. That says 1.273. That's definitely close. So I have got 1.273 grams of this anhydrous sodium carbonate. Next thing is I need to dissolve that down to make it suitable to go into my burette. So to do that, I'm going to put it into this volumetric flask. This volumetric flask has a volume of 250.00 mils but I just want to make sure that it's all nice and clean because I don't know exactly what's been in it first. So distilled water, I'm trying to swirl it around. Just catch any surface. Maybe there's some tiny little bits of impurity in there. That'll do it. And secondly, because I'm going to use a funnel to get that into there, I'm going to rinse the funnel down a little bit. So once again, swirl around on all the surfaces if I can. Distilled water. If I get drips of distilled water in there, it doesn't matter. Okay, now I'm going to do my best to transfer all of that into there. Finish it up. Okay, so a little bit left on the surface. I'm just going to try and empty that through. and squirt down as much of this as I can. All the way, I hope you're thinking about errors. Remember, this is all about precision and accuracy. So are there any places that I might be losing my accuracy here? Okay. I'm happy that that's clean. There's a little bit still in the funnel here. Oh, one little bit refuses to go. Funnel I'm happy with. I think that the funnel is completely clean. Once I'm happy with that, what I want to do now is I want to fill this up to about halfway up the bulb. It's already kind of there. And now I'm going to just shake it. I'm going to shake it until I can dissolve most of that there. And then I'm going to fill it right up to that mark. Shake it all around. Okay, that looks pretty good. A couple of little solids there, but because we're going to be waiting for a little bit, I'm sure they'll dissolve by the time that we need to get there. Okay, looks all good. All right, so now I'm going to try my best to fill it up to the mark. Um, so to get down low, I want the meniscus to be right on that level there. Probably not the most exciting thing for you guys to watch on the video. It's always worth being a little bit careful once we get over the fat bulb bit because it does go a lot quicker once it goes above that. It's getting to the scary bit now. I can go drop by drop. Much, much closer now, so 
just to ensure I don't go over, which would be an absolute disaster, I'm gonna to go to an even more accurate measure, which is to use a little disposable pipette. And this pipette will allow a little bit more accuracy, a little bit more control, so that I can get exactly to where I wanna to get to. I just wanna watch that meniscus. Keeping an eye on that meniscus. Drop or two away here. There we go, bang on. Okay, that there is our standard solution of sodium carbonate. So just to check the results, so far we've got that the mass of the sodium carbonate is 1.273 grams. The volume of the stock solution, you might remember, was 250.00 mil. Um, and that is step one. We have now made a standard solution of base so that we can react it with the acid. See you soon. Okay, so we've set up for the titration here. Now we've got our burette. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put our hydrochloric acid into the burette simply because I've got more hydrochloric acid than I do with this standard solution. So I'm going to fill this up, but before I do, I've got to make sure that it's all rinsed and clean because I don't want to ruin that last time. So we'll just take this out. Just ensuring that we've got the tap off, I'm gonna pour a little bit of a hydrochloric acid in as a way of rinsing. Probably don't wanna use this here. No, it's gonna take me far too long. So I'll use my funnel. I'm not looking to put loads in here. I just wanna be able to get enough to touch all the surfaces. So that's my hydrochloric acid. Okay, now I wanna just touch the surfaces swirl it around, making sure I get as much of the surface touched as I can. I've got my big waste bucket here, I can pour some of it out the top. Some of it's out the top there. I'm gonna get some of it out the tip, pouring out nicely, so that's probably cleaned in there. And then the final bit is to pour it all the way out there. So all that waste has been discarded. I now have a nice clean burette that's been rinsed and what's going in it, which happens to be the acid this time. And now I can fill it up with the HCl. Now once again, just please remember that you don't want to be pouring stuff above your eye level, especially an acid. So if you are concerned, and this is a little high, I could bring it down a bit to make it a bit safer. If you are concerned, you can always remove it from the desk. But I feel that that's okay for me, it's not above my eye level. So I'm going to make sure that the tap's off. I'm going to pour some in. Now, I don't really care how much is in it yet. I'm not really measuring. Probably, I don't know. You know what, I might fill this little bottle. I've got a fair few more over there. So let's see what this bottle takes us up to. Hopefully it's around about the 10 mil mark. Pretty close to the 10 mil. That'll do us. I don't need to measure yet. I don't need to get an eyesight yet. Remember to take the funnel out. Uh, and now I want to make sure that that is, that the tip there is full and has absolutely no air bubbles in it. So just flick it like a, you might have seen the people on the TV flick hypodermic needles. A couple of little bubbles have gone there, all good. So I'm going to write down at this stage my very first initial, uh, initial reading for titration number one trying to get that to two decimal places, that is 14.32, brilliant. So that's my acid. Now for my base. This is my base. This is gonna go into the conical flask underneath and we're gonna tighter until there's a color change. So I wanna get exactly 20 mil, so 20.00 mil and I'm gonna get it out with this pipette and pipette bowl. But once again, this is all about accuracy, so we're gonna just rinse it first. So I'm gonna draw a little bit in, not a lot. That is tons. So you might be able to see it on the video. Once again, I'm just trying to coat all the surfaces so that that 
sodium carbonate is going to touch all of the surfaces, get any impurities left behind in the cleaning process or, or whatever we've used before. Might even be as simple as dust and dirt. Okay. Pipette. Rinsed. Now I'm going to get 20 ml, 20.00 ml. Okay. All right, get down low so that I can see nice and clearly. And I'm going to draw some up until I get to that mark. Perfect. Okay, so I have got that up to the mark. My pipette is a 20.00 mil pipette. So I'm going to pop that into here, draw it out, so putting this into a previously rinsed with distilled water conical flask, last couple of drops, three taps, three taps. Okay. Now I'm going to add in three to four drops. Not really important if it's three or if it's four, as long as I do it the same every single time. And I want to see if I can get about four titrations. So three to four drops of this indicator. This indicator is methyl orange. So we're looking for the four drops. Nice. I'll give that a little swirl around. Now the volume of the aliquot, the aliquot is how much of my sodium carbonate I was I put into there. It's a small amount, it was 20.00 mil. Okay, that's my aliquot. Let's see how much I have to titrate. So give myself a little space. Okay, time to titrate. Looking for a colour change. Oh, I can start to see it going a little bit pink, so I might go a little bit slower than I was before. That pink is definitely staying there. I feel like I'm close. down to kind of drop by drop. Now the first one you do is invariably a little bit of, it doesn't matter if it's super accurate, it gives us a really good guide as to how much the next lot will have to be. That pink is close. Oh, it's close, it's close. I'm thinking we're very, very close. a bit over there. So that has definitely changed colour. That's pink. So if I look on here, it's a nice little view in here and that is 20, 29 point, I just saw this, 6, 29.58, 29.58. Okay. And that's our first titration. I'll do four more, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, welcome back. So, uh, I've now done five titrations. The results are up on the board, so make sure you've got these results. Just remember that the original mass was 1.273, that's that. The stock solution in there was 250.00 mil. We took 20 mil aliquots. Uh, work out each of the titrations. Your job from there is to see if you can find the average of the concordant titers. So hopefully you know what that means. After that, it's now time to work out what the concentration of this is. So you're going to use stoichiometry. Uh, this is the beginnings of the reaction. 
hopefully you can finish off that reaction yourselves. Once you've got that, see if you can work out some sort of link between here, given what you've got. You should have things like a V, you should have things like that. You can work out the molar mass, you can work out the number of mole, you can work out the concentration. Our whole goal for this is to find the concentration HCl, uh, and we want that in mole per litre, or molar. Remembering that we grabbed it out of the cupboard and the labels all said that it was about 0.1 molar. So we're pretty sure it's gonna be in that ballpark, but we wanna be much more accurate than that. We're hoping it's not crazy different to that, but we're hoping it's in the ballpark. Take a look at the results. Those results are now yours. The rest of the sack will follow, and that is working out that. Okay, folks.